you can't squeeze through. Are you ready? <laughs> right. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Take a pew. Oh, where did you get those from? They look good. What are they? They're little cupcakes. Yeah. We had oranges in here yesterday. It wasn't quite as good. They look nicer. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. Come to, yeah, take a seat. Hi, uh, just for those of you that don't know, my name's Steve Jordan, I'm the editor of The Mover magazine, and uh, the, the presentations that we've been doing over the last uh, couple of days are all going to be, at some stage, uh, summarized through the magazine. So if you, if you want to pick up on anything that anybody said, want a, a resume of it, then you can find it there. We're also videoing everything, and there will be links available to the video as well, so you can always go back and have a look at things if you need to. Uh, so that's that. Thank you all for coming. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, the session today is all about Google uh, ads and how to get the best out of them, how to get your name to the top of that Google rankings list, which is the, the, uh, the holy mecca for, for, for all of us. Um, and this is the second time we've done this presentation. We did this presentation yesterday. And, uh, and I'm delighted to say it went down a storm. And it went down a storm mainly, entirely, because of the presenter, Laura Maxim. Come and join in. Well, that was a very warm welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. How's everyone's heads this morning? Mine's a little bit, um, needs a little bit more water. So, Let's crack on. So I'm going to share with you some secrets about Google Ads, because we speak to lots of people that are doing Google Ads, and we've got a lot of data that we can share. So we're going to be able to share with you some of the big secrets on how to increase the number of sales inquiries from your Google Ads. So who wants some more sales inquiries? Anyone benefit from a few more sales inquiries? Yeah, good. But the trouble is, generally, business owners, marketing managers, um, you know, whatever role you have within the business, you are possibly doing a bit of HR, a bit of payroll, trying to sort out logistics. So there's lots of things going on within your role. So trying to be that Google Ads person or that person that's going to get you more sales leads and inquiries is just one of the one many facets to your, to your skill set. But, you know, marketing's really easy, isn't it? Is it? I don't think it is. I don't think it is at all. Because there's loads of different ways that you can gather sales leads and inquiries into your business. So you've got online advertising, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. So that could be Google Ads. It could be Facebook Ads. Uh, you've got local SEO. By, by way of show of hands, how many people are doing Google Ads? Just so I get a feel for okay so there's lots of learning to be done here so today you're going to learn a lot about how google ads can help grow your business and get you more sales leads but these are the different other activities that you can be doing too so local seo which means being better on the maps so when somebody's searching locally for whatever it is that you're offering then you come up higher on that map or alternatively, SEO could be putting more information or the right kind of keywords into your website. So when Google presents that list of businesses, yours hopefully will be higher. Social media marketing, you know, you guys can read. I don't need to read out the list, but these are the kind of things that you could be doing within your business. It's like if you imagine a Parthenon, so you've got all the pillars. These are all of the pillars that can help grow your business. There is no magic bullet that's going to bring all of these customers in. So it's a bit of a journey, you know, going, climbing this mountain. You try and get onto the mountain. Then you find, oh, God, there's this crevice. I've got to get around here. And then I've got to come, up, come over this, um, this obstacle. So whatever marketing you're doing, it's not plain sailing. You know, it's not, marketing is not easy. 
I've run a business, um, an agency for 10 years. So we've seen all of these things. And that's how I'm being able to share a lot of this with you today. This is what I hear quite a lot, actually. Bus Google Ads doesn't work. It doesn't work for my business. It's not profitable. Now, the reason for that could be the cost per click is really high. There's a number of different things that impact that. So the relevancy of your website to what somebody's searching for. It could be, have you actually looked at what the competitors are doing locally and making sure that your offering is in line or you know, better than what the local competitors are doing? So there's a number of different things that can impact on that fact that people go, oh, you know what, I'm cost you know, I'm spending all this money and it's not working. But this is the goal. Google Ads is purely to help grow your business. It's to help you get more phone leads and inquiries coming through of somebody ringing saying, oh, I've just found you on Google. Can we have a chat? Can you give me a quote on removals or storage? It's potentially people to come in and book online or to inquire via the contact website, uh, the contact page. So this is the goal. This is what we're trying to achieve. And I'd like to just share a couple of case studies with you so that we can bring to life how it can, how it can help your business. So I spoke to Joel at Move My Stuff and he was getting a little bit frustrated because he was struggling in quite a crowded marketplace and was working with an aggregator and getting lots of inquiries through an aggregator. And he'd also tried a bit of Google Ads and kind of back of a fag packet style, and it wasn't generating what he wanted it to do. And the challenge with the aggregators was more the fact that he'd got this lead. When I say aggregators, you know, you're sort of through a, um, a lead broker. And so you would get that lead and that lead would also go to other companies. Now, the challenge was that he was fighting with those other people that was being provided that lead. So he would ideally want the company or the inquirer, sorry, to come directly through to his website. So we made changes and, and now he's got that constant flow of inquiries and leads that are coming directly to his web website rather than a number of different websites. So a huge benefit to the business. And another example, this is a company that was doing Google Ads themselves through, uh, through an agency. And so we audited the account and had a look at that. And in fact, they were making some of the mistakes or, or you know, they don't know what they don't know. You know, it's, this is what I was saying right at the beginning. Google Ads is one of the things that is within your business. And, you know, you didn't start a business to go, right, I'm going to be really good at Google Ads. You know, that's, that's not what we start out with business as. So we looked at the account, made various changes, and the impact on their business really, really helped. And now on that particular site, they're full, and they've been able to change some of their rates, and they've really benefited from just those tweaks and improvements within their Google Ads campaigns. So let's have a look at why Google Ads. Why do I actually need it? Well, 80% of people that are looking for what you're doing are looking via the internet, and they're going to be choosing you via the internet. So it's, it's too big to ignore. You know, the, the people are out there. So for removals, there's 37,000 people using some of Google's tools, 37,000 people searching each month for these kind of services. Now, that isn't how many people are necessarily going to look in your area because you only want your adverts to be shown in that local targeted area. However, there's a lot of people that search to Google. You know, I'm, I'm in the market at the moment for a new dishwasher because that's just broken. So where am I going to go? Google, of course. So uh, sounds like you might be in the same situation too. And... There's an element of seasonality in talking to lots of removals and storage companies. They feel that seasonality. But in actual fact, with the data, it's showing that... So this is one of Google's tools. It's called the Keyword Planner Tool. And it shows you the amount of people that are searching for terms. And this is across the UK. And it's, it, it's got a little bit of a dip down in December. But on the whole, it's fairly consistent throughout the year. Now, I'm not saying that they're going, to be, they're going to be making that sales purchase that day, but they're constantly searching. So if you're not there, you're going to miss out on that opportunity. So there's a lot of opportunity, and um, you know, there was a, 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 a small proportion of people that put their hand up about Google Ads. So it's exciting that there's opportunity for others to be able to grab more sales leads. And you're probably getting lots of re removals and, and storage inquiries through word of mouth, 
um, you're, you're probably great in the community, but it's those people that haven't heard of you that want to be able to you know, find you as an option. So that's, that's the reason behind Google Ads. Just a minute, if I may, just about YBA, my business. So we're 10 years old now, and, uh, and we're in the top 3% of agencies as a premier partner with Google, which I'm, I'm very proud of. And it's quite an accolade, and it's based on the amount of ad spend that you manage for your clients, and also to do with the results that you get. So things like the click-through rate and quality scores that Google, Google are, are, are very keen on. So the whole goal, though, is that we are there to help our clients grow, to get them more sales, leads, and inquiries. And I sound like a broken record, but that's exactly what Google Ads does. So that is my pure focus for our business and our clients. So we're a preferred supplier with the, the BAR, the Removals Association, and the Self Storage Association as well. So we work with a wide range of clients in, that, in those sectors. So we have a real aggregated amount of data. So we know what works. Uh, not plug and play because every business is different every offering is different but it's using those strategic ideas and the understanding across the you know the volume of uh, businesses that we work with and working with those associations I'm not sure if anyone sees my Friday video does anyone get my Friday video no right well give me your email address and I'll make sure that you get it uh, on a Friday I send out a little video and I've just done one this morning up in Willbox up there um, and it's really just sort of a minute, a minute and a half about business tips, marketing tips to, uh, to help, help uh, other businesses. So we write in the magazine, etc. So today, what I would like to share you with you is my four biggest secrets. There's loads of other stuff that I can share. And in the room, there'll be people that will think, what the heck is Google Ads to people that have been spending thousands of pounds a month and everything in between. So as an audience, I would love to be able to appeal to all of you in your own individual way. So hopefully my goal is that you can take something away from today that you can apply for your business. And so what is Google Ads? Well, it's not a paperclip, and that's what some people think. So it's a pay-per-click model. And how it works is when somebody searches and clicks on the ad, that's when that business pays Google. That amount varies, and I'm absolutely not going to get into that today. It's quite a scientific thing behind it. But you pay when somebody clicks on that ad. This is what it looks like on Google. So you, you can't quite see it, but I've put in there storage units for high, um, storage units near me. I'm based in Harpenden in Hertfordshire. And these ones here in the orange box, those are the ads. So Google is always changing, always testing, and always looking at data. So at the moment, that when I did that search, it says ad. You can see it in little tiny little letters there, but sometimes it might say sponsored. Sometimes it's in a different color. They are always beta testing things, so it, it kind of catches your eye. So the Google ads are those four in the box. So there could be up to four that are advertised at the top. Then underneath that, that is the Google business profile. So make sure that your business has a Google business profile listing. I'm sure everybody in this audience has one. I'm really hoping you do. If not, Google it and get yourself one because it's free and you want to be on that map. So that's Google business profile. And then the rest of the listings is what I mentioned right at the beginning, which is SEO, search engine optimization. So essentially what you're doing there is you're putting relevant words, content, videos, images on your website. So Google goes, ah, right, okay, that website's really good for storage units, Harpenden, for example. So it will then put it in that listing. The benefit of Google Ads is that you get to pay. You get to control it. You get to measure it. You're in the driving seat. Whereas these more organic things take, take a long time. You have to constantly be changing it. And Google often change their algorithms. So you could be in position two or three organically down here. And then Google goes, oh, no, we're going to change things today. And then you're further down. And you've invested all this time, effort, and energy into it. So the benefit of Google Ads is that you can control it. You can be right at the top, right at the top there. And this example is for uh, removals. Now, the difference with here that you'll see is right at the top, Google has a new thing called Google Guarantee, which means that if you're very, you, you have to apply and you're accepted on this, but it's more of a pay-per-lead model. 
rather than a pay per click. So you're gonna pay Google every time you get an inquiry coming through. So they will verify you based on your, you know, that you're fully insured and you have a good number of reviews in your Google business profile. And then you get to have that, that listing right at the top. Then you have the, the Google Ads, which is the second block of yellow that I, I explained earlier. And then you've got the Google business profile listing too. Does that all make sense? Okay. So we know what it is. But why do we have it? Why do we need to bring people to the website? Now, this is blindingly obvious, but I wanted to just talk through some simple maths to understand actually what it can create you. So first of all, we need to bring people to the website. That's, that's where we're starting. Now, when they get to the website, what are they gonna do? So we want them to do something. You either want them to ring you up or to fill out the form to become a sales lead and an inquiry to your business that you didn't ordinarily have, because if you weren't advertising on Google or right at the top, they're just gonna go to your competitors. That's all they can do. So roughly say 10 to 15%, you will not get everybody that comes to your website to take action, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that doesn't happen. But let's say roughly if we look at the maths of say 10 to 15% of people that come to your website will take action. That will be dependent on how good your website and your landing page is, and I'll talk more about this later. So lots of things can impact on that. And then the third one is once people have taken action, they then will come, become a sale, let's hope. So really a key in this is about follow-up. Google Ads can do so much. It can bring people to your website and it can hopefully get people to pick up the phone. How you then deal with that is up to you and your follow-up processes. And it costs money to do all this stuff. So you don't want to be wasting money with people coming to the website. They ring up and they get a voicemail or an answer phone. That is not going to work very well. So pick up the phone within two or three rings. Ring them back if they leave a message or if they fill out the form. Get straight on there. Have an automated system so it sends them a text. It sends them a little video. Uh, you ring them back within a few minutes. Make sure that you are maximizing on this opportunity when people take the effort, frankly, to get in contact with you. I'll get off my hobby horse now. But I blame, with Google Ads, I blame Bananarama. I don't know if you remember Bananarama, but they did a great song. Um, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it that gets results. So it's the way that we do these things. You could go and do a YouTube video and figure out how to do Google Ads. Anyone can do Google Ads, but doing it well with all of the things that I'm explaining today and many, many more is where you get the good outcomes, the good results. And achieve this, which will hopefully then build your business, increase your team, and achieve your personal why, whatever it is. That's what we're here for. That's what we're trying to achieve. So secret number one is keywords. Google is based firstly on a keyword level. So there's, there's lots of other things that you can do, but in its simplest form for a storage or removal business, we're bidding on the keyword. So you say to Google, these are the keywords, Google, I want you to find to put our website right at the top so the type of keywords that you've been considering it's not rocket science you know ask uh, I, I often talk about my mum you know my mum is an ideal customer you know she may not use removals for many years or she may um, have never used self-storage okay so mum what are you going to type into google well self-storage st albans you know it's it's not rocket science we're not we're not talking about really in-depth long-winded keywords so, buyer intent is the whole point of Google Ads. So I've gone to Google, I've got my credit card in my back pocket, I'm looking for a company that I can work with. Making it buyer intent is including, say, the town name afterwards. So removals or self-storage, and you can get a little bit more, um, more granular, so you could put 20-foot storage container units, etc. But we want to have the term plus town or plus near me and... So a buyer intent type of keyword is key. I'm gonna jump down to number four actually. So the other thing is not only do you select the keyword, but actually you've then got to select what's called the match type. Now the match type is there's, there's a number of different things that Google are always changing. So the match types that I've given there is, firstly is exact match. Going back to the example of removals Harpenden, 
it means that when somebody types in just those keywords, your ad should show at the top. So that's an exact match keyword. And within your account, you'll see it's got little square brackets around it. You have a lot more control, but then you're not really learning new ways that people can type things in. So the cost per click on, on exact match is slightly higher than it is for the broader match. So the next one there is broad match. Now, back in the day, like eight, eight years ago, broad match, Google would go, yeah, you, you, you're looking for red shoes? Oh, okay, burgundy shoes, we'll show you those. It, you know, you can burn through a lot of cash. Broad match now is a lot tighter. So broad match is a good one to test. So with all Google ads, it's about testing, looking at the data, making changes to improve things. And the last one is phrase match. And that's the one, as I say to my kids, with the little bunny ears either side. So phrase match means that those terms can be typed in with something before or after it, and your ads would show. So those are the different match types. So it gets a little bit more, more complicated. Now, the other control that you have around Google is the targeting. So not only can you select the type of keywords that you want to have, you can also select the geographical area that you want your ads to show. And typically for removals and storage, it would be, well, for storage, it would be more sort of 10 to 15 miles around where you're based, depending geographically if you're in a city or if you're in a more urban area. But you can target that. So if we look at then on the flip side, let's say for self-storage, if you are based, your, your self-storage is in Leeds, you might want to consider having a UK-wide campaign for somebody that's perhaps looking in Edinburgh and looking at moving to, Steve, uh, to, to Leeds. So you can then have an out-of-area campaign. It brings you a little trickle feed through of additional leads, but lots of people don't, don't have this set up. If we look on the other side, we need to consider negative keywords. Now we've looked at what we want to, for be, to be found for, but then we can also find that people type in things like self-storage jobs, uh, removals, for, uh, cheap removals, for example. You, you, that might not fit for your business. You might not be looking for somebody that wants a job. So then you look through and you go, okay, we're gonna put jobs as a negative, we're gonna put cheap as a negative, and that will negate your ads being shown for those particular terms. You get what's called a search query report, which is the list of exactly what people typed into Google that clicked on your ads. So as part of the ongoing management, you need to go in there and go, ah, we need to stick jobs and cheap on as a negative. We don't want that to be found again. They're very brutal examples, but it could be competitors' names. It could be other things that come up and you think, no, I don't want to be found for that. So again, you get to control this. This is the great thing. Number two, Banging ad copy. So, it's very competitive, as you can imagine. You, your job as an advertiser is to, is to earn and achieve the eyeballs of somebody that's searching. So we need to be different in some way. We need to be very relevant, I said there first of all. So if you're looking for uh, removals Harpenden, you don't want to see an ad. I mean, this example here. So removals company Hemel Hempstead, in the ad, you'll see the red box. It says leading removals company Tring. Now, I know Tring is just up the road from Hemel Hempstead, but if my mother is searching for Hemel Hempstead removals and it says Tring, she's like, oh, well, it can't be right then. So just these real basic things can make you go out going, well, Google Ads doesn't work because somebody's seen it and not clicked on it. And then, you know, it's, it's not working so well. So relevancy is number one. Number two is be different. This is, a, this is something that I really feel strongly about in marketing because it's, you know, it's, it's always very vanilla. We've got to try and make it, mix it up somehow. Have you got a great location? Have you, do you give a bottle of fizz out for every new customer? Do you, are you award winning? Uh, what is it that you do differently? And I'm sure you get the question from people going, well, I'm speaking to you and I'm also speaking to this company. Why should I use you? So you're already answering the question, put it in your Google ad, make sure that yours is more compelling and more, more eye-catching. So what you can do is you can do like a little mini competitor gap analysis. Go back to the office, do a search, see what the other advertisers locally are saying and think, oh Don, we're better than that because X, Y, and Z. You know, we've got 20 years of experience and they've got three years of experience, whatever, whatever it is that's different. So go have a look and challenge yourself as to why you are different. 
and location. So if you're you know, right next to Starbucks or we're on the high street or we're right on the M5 junction, whatever, you know, location is a key thing. And if it's for removals, then show that you are local in the community. Now, the impact of making these changes and testing these things out in the ad copy can be really massive to, to the outcome of your results. So in this example, we made some changes to the ad copy for um, Hazel Edwards' container team down in Bristol. And having that change in ad copy, you'll see there the results themselves, the conversion rate. So this is the percentage of people when they hit the landing page, what percentage of people take action. It, it went up considerably. And, um, and the click-through rate, so this is the, the percentage of people once they've seen the ad that click on the ad. So the click-through rate went up, that's a mouthful, click-through rate went up and when they come to the landing page that was increased as well due to the relevancy of the, the landing page to the ad copy too. So if you're doing Google Ads, think, okay, let's have a look at the ads. Let's refresh them up. This is something that should be happening on a regular basis once you've got statistically significant data. Moving on to number three. So number three is about the landing page. There's the landing page in its simplest form is the page that you take people to on your website. So you've got a website and if you take, I keep referring back to my lovely mother, uh, you take them back to your home page. Well, there's the blogs, there's pictures, there's everything that you can look at. And oh, there's somebody at the door, I'm going to go. So we need to have a single purpose on the page that we take people to on the website. So a landing page is exactly that. You're just landing somebody onto that one page and that is geared to try and get them to take action. That's the purpose of it. What we want on that page is relevancy. If I've typed in removals Harpenden, removals St Albans, self-storage Harpenden, whatever the term is that I've typed in, the ideal scenario is they come to that page and that's the headline. You know, we don't need to be rocket scientists to come up with some weird and wonderful headline. We want it to feel relevant. So when they come to the page, they go, oh, all right, brilliant. I feel like I'm at home. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So that's the first thing is about having a relevant headline. Then we need to build up some trust and credibility to then get them to take the next step. Because with marketing, let's say, for example, you've got a leaflet. The, the goal of the headline is really just to get them to read the next, next bit. And the goal of the next bit is to get them to do the next bit along this, uh, along this leaflet. So the landing page is really similar. So we want to have a really relevant headline, draw them to the next bit, draw them to that call to action. We've all got short attention spans. Don't give them reams of information about who you are, what you do, what your background is. I don't care. Are you what I'm looking for? Are you any good? Can I trust you? All right, I'll give you a call. So that's the goal of the landing page. There's a number of things that you can do to test out your landing page, and I've got a list coming up that you can, you can have a look at. The, the, what I wanted to share here was a few key things to analyze. So firstly, the speed. Google Ads is about relevancy. It wants to give its customers what they're looking for, but also it doesn't want its customers hanging around. It wants to have a page that it goes to that's nippy, that it's going to be fast, it's going to give them what they're looking for. Now, when you go to your website, you might think, oh, this works really fast. Not in the eyes of Google. So I will show you a, um, a page to go at to have a look at your website, and it's just literally like driving your, you're doing a driving test. You've got, to, you've got to play the game with Google. We need to have a good speedy website and then you will have a lower cost per click because you're getting mates rates from Google. So that's the first thing, it's about speed. Call to action. So this is about making sure you have a clear and concise thing that you want somebody to do. Don't have reams of information, have it really clean and clear. I give this example that there's, there's a website in the States where you can have your website tested or landing page tested and you pay for somebody to go and drink a bottle of wine, go to your landing page and see if they know what they're meant to be doing. So my equivalent of that is to give a landing page to my daughter, my younger son, and, get, and then I say, right, go on, what, what have you got? What is this website? What, what has it got to do? Sometimes they'll come back going, I have absolutely no idea. So it's a bit of a litmus test to make sure that it's really easy that people can take that next step in, along their journey. 
We want to have an offer, and I don't necessarily mean about money offers. I'm not saying about, you know, the, the, the race to the bottom. The offer could be, you know, a very clear, get, get a quote within five minutes. It could be, come down and, you know, you get a bottle of champagne or, you know, think about what the offer, what, what makes you different to stand out among this, you know, kind of vanilla offering with lots of, lots of, oh, in, this, in the, um, you know, it, as offers. It needs to be really relevant as well. And that goes back to the headline and the language that you're using that's compelling with the person that's searching. People like to, you know, we don't like to, we, we kind of like, like sheep, you know, we, we look at an endorsement and go, okay, well, so it says, I was really looked after, they didn't let me down, they turned up when they said they were going to do. All those things that you think about when you're looking for some of these services. So stick a really really um, brief endorsement so it gives them that credibility and that trust that they want to to take that next step so these are some of the things that you need to consider on your landing page to give you an example just to bring this to life with some data because I love numbers so Brandt self storage this was their original page that we were sending traffic to and we made some changes to test against a land against a landing page Things can always be improved. They can always be um, adjusted and split tested AB. And the improvement that it had was the conversions went up and the cost per click went down slightly due to the speed and due to the relevancy. But effectively, for the same amount of spend, you're getting the same amount of people to the website, but actually when they hit the website, they're more likely to take action. So you can double your outcomes potentially by making some really significant changes to the landing page. Does that all make sense? Great. So it might be worth just taking a picture of this and challenging yourself with your landing page to make sure that you are covering some of these elements. So to run through them again, having a relevant headline, and this is linked to the keyword that somebody typed in, not rocket science, have a clear headline of somebody, what somebody's typed in, which is the, the service plus the, plus the town name idea, ideally. Underneath the headline, three key reasons why somebody should use you. I've said USPs, which is unique selling points. Why should you be chosen by this company? So that's the second thing. So you've got the headline, you've got the key reasons why somebody should engage with you, and then you've got a really clear call to action, which is call us today now and speak to Sally in the office or pop your details and we'll get a quote to you within, you know, instantly. Some social proof. So the social proof is, um, you know, Jane Smith. Oh, it was great. They turned up when they said they were and, and it was stress free. You know, that's that's it doesn't need to be any more complicated, but just overcome some objection, objectives, uh, objections that somebody might feel. Perhaps you have a video walkthrough so somebody can really understand because they haven't seen your business. They don't know who you are. So if you have a little video walkthrough, potentially from a self-storage perspective, you could do, if you've got a drone, have a little drone uh, bit of footage that you can show or a little walkthrough that says, hi, this is the Wheelbox storage unit and this is what it looks like inside. Come, come down and visit us. So people can really understand and visualize themselves engaging with your business. Images, make it personal. I don't see enough people in websites in storage and, and, and removals. People love to buy people, so we need to show those people to say, look, this is the person, Sally, that's going to have a chat with you, and this is Bob, the, the, you know, the person that's going to the, do the removals for you. That can be really helpful. Credibility, which we've talked about. And then further down the page, you know, if you wanted to do some further, there's things like some key features that you could, you could highlight. You could do a kind of a next steps as to how it works and some FAQs. But the main key things are in this top element and that's what you need to have right at the top of the landing page. I mentioned about page speed. So this is the website that you should go to if you haven't already and you can do it periodically to make sure that your website is of good speed. If you go to this website and put in your landing page or your website, it will then give you a dashboard that shows you a number out of 100. Now, it's great if you can get into the greens, you might be in the oranges, or if you're in the reds, that's as the school report would say, room for improvement. 
Now, if you're in the reds, then we need to be looking at these three key things. These, these are the three biggies that people, um, people get caught short with. It, compressed images. Now, on your website, you might have some big images or you might have some data-hungry video. And what happens is when the website is trying to load, it's really working hard. The hamsters are really running around in the background trying to get the website to be speedy. So you can compress these pages down or compress these images and videos down so that it loads and, and releases your website quicker. You may have, over time, it's like building a house, you know, you've got all these bricks. So you may have, with your website, you've put various things onto your website. You've put a new form on or you've got something, um, some app that's running. Now, over time, you may have things that you don't really need. So you can remove some of those scripts because scripts are the things that slow things down. So just have a check with your, your website person uh, or whoever's looking after your website in-house. In, in ha speak to them and have a look to see if there's anything that you can remove. And lastly is hosting. Hosting, changing your host can be a big lever just to really improve the, the page speed. So the benefit of having the page speed faster, and it may be that you feel your website's fast already, is really just playing the game with Google. And if you're doing Google Ads, this is where you can, you can improve that quality score, which means that your cost per click comes down. So you're getting more for your money. Secret number four. So there's a number of different things, like almost unlimited, of the things that you can do to test, measure, and use that data to then improve the outcomes of your Google Ads. So you come out going, ah, it's brilliant, it works now. So firstly, ad variants. So what I mean by that is you can change some of the types of ads that you've got. There's um, responsive search ads, there's display ads, there's different variants like pictures and, and, um, and words and various things that you can do. So you can test different variants of your ads to see how that improves or, or has a negative impact, but have a look at the data and make the right reactions to it. Test the headlines. And it was funny because, you know, back in the day of Google, um, when I, f I first started doing Google Ads, the cost per click was literally pence rather than pounds. And what people would do is they, they'd be thinking, right, I'm going to start this business, and I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. So I'm going to do a Google Ad and just see if people click on the ad, and then that effectively is like the litmus, litmus test if, it's, if the business is going to be viable or not. Not from a financial perspective, but if people are interested in this particular option. The, um, the call to action, that's the next thing. So what you have in your ad could be free quote, it could be call today, it could be pop down and see us. There's all these different things that you can change in the wording of your ad. And what you're then looking at is the click-through rate, the number, like the performance measure against that. So you could have two, you've got A and B, and you look, this one's got a 10% click-through rate, this one's got a 7.5% click-through rate. Right, let's bin that one off and let's come up with another idea and then split test the two. So this is kind of the cat and mouse game that you're playing to be able to increase that outcome. Without making too much technical detail here, there's various bidding strategies that you can use. So it's a pay-per-click model, but then you can test different ways. You can manually say, right, this is how much we were going to prepare to pay, or you can lean into the machine learning and the AI and different strategies. So you could say to Google, okay, I'm prepared to pay 20 pounds a lead. Right, now go put my ads out to different places and that's how we're gonna get the leads. So it's all with testing to see which is going to get you the best outcome. And fifth that we've talked about is the landing page. So test the landing page. It's not cast in stone. It's always up for grabs. It's a game, it's brilliant. And that's why I love it, is you can always make these changes and, and have a great outcome on your business. Now a bonus secret, and this is a non-negotiable. If you don't have this set up accurately, I'm gonna put in the word accurately, then it, it, you have no idea what's going on. So, accurate conversion tracking. Tracking is a way to find out what's working and what's not in your Google Ads account. And it's all about numbers. It gives you the numbers to allow to tweak the right levers and get you more of what's working. So it's like going to a cricket match. You know, you look at them sprinting around and doing all this stuff. If you don't know the scoreline, how do you know how many runs you need? How am I doing? How am I doing against the opposition? 
So Google Ads is much the same. You need to know your score line so you can see where I'm winning, where I'm losing. Right, I'm losing there. Right, let's ditch that. Right, let's come up with some more. So you double down on what's working. And that's the fact of it being measurable, controllable and scalable. Can you tell I love Google Ads? I do. Anyway, so the sorts of things that you should be tracking is for removals and for storage is phone calls. This is the best way to get the inquiry because when you're on the phone to somebody, you can overcome their objections, you can help them, you can guide them because they don't know if they're ringing somebody in an ivory tower or in somebody's van. They, um, they can get a feel for the business, you can talk to them, you can get across various messages. So an inbound phone call is a really strong sales lead. So we want to track that. And the way that we track this for our clients is we have some tracking code that sits on the website and it allows the telephone number that's rang to be captured as a phone call, as like an audio file. We can then go, okay, on that particular phone call, we know that they saw this ad, they clicked on this keyword, and that allows us to get more phone calls with that data. Now, without it, you can't. You've got no idea. So you send people to the to the website, you don't know if they phoned you, whether you haven't been phoned, so it, it doesn't give you that measurement. Contact form or filling out the, you know, the quote request form, that's the other way that people would engage with you on the website. So we'd want that tracked. And how that is tracked is when somebody fills out the form, they then should go to a thank you page. And on that thank you page is a little bit of code that talks to Google Ads and shows that that keyword has made that, that person fill out the form. Or a booking form if you've actually got a, you know, an online purchase where somebody can book. Or indeed live chat if you've got that. Those are the four key areas that people are going to take that next sales step. So we want to track those in your Google Ads account. And you can then see... Uh, see the outcomes. You want to know how much have I spent, how many inquiries have I got, and what's the cost per inquiry. Those are kind of the key first level, high level KPIs that you're looking for. And so if you've got accurate conversion tracking, that's really key. Now, um, I talk about accurate conversion tracking because so many people I speak to and we look at their accounts, actually the tracking's not quite right. It may be showing two leads uh, for one phone call instead of instead of one because there's various default settings in Google I've got some blank faces so I'm going to move on but getting it right is so important because you can only be as good as the data that you're you're um, you're given and on that point Google Ads is really really complex I mean I've literally just scratched the surface for all of the different things all the levers that you can turn and not just levers, it's the strategic thinking and the understanding and how you make this beast to work. So there's all these different things that you can be doing. So I hope that you've been able to take away some things that you can apply, that you can learn, challenge yourself on your offering. Um, are you standing out? Are you different? What keywords are you advertising on? What is your ad copy like? Is it good enough? Is it pretty vanilla? Should we be improving it and, um, and sort of stress testing it? Could you consider a new landing page? Test a landing page to see if from the same amount of traffic you're able to get more inquiries. And relevancy. Is it really relevant for somebody? Are they coming to a page that's geared specifically for what they're looking for? Or are they coming to your website where it's a little bit more general and they can then get slightly more lost? And are you tracking and testing these things? So hopefully you've all been able to take away something and I've challenged you and, um, and that will help you get more sales leads and inquiries. I have got um, the opportunity to have a chat with me should you want to discuss anything further or maybe you think actually I could just do with a little bit more help with that. So do by all means get in touch with us and be delighted to help or come visit us down on stand C6. So thank you very much everybody. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have a little bit of time for questions? If anybody would like to ask a question, please use the mic. Uh, I've got a question because I always have, but I want to let you have the first go. No? OK. OK, well, well I'm going to ask the question that I think you all might be thinking. Uh, and that is, I just wonder, what is the business case for doing this and for coming to your company and getting your company to do this for us? rather than just simply going to a lead generation company and let them do it for you. Can you explain that? 
Well, I think the, the case study to begin with is a good example. I mean, you know, we're all adults here. We get to make their own decisions. It's your business. It's your destiny. However, there's, you know, all things are not provided equally. So I guess the benefit of doing Google Ads over potentially aggregators could be that you have the lead coming directly to you. You control it and, and you can measure it and you can get more of that particular bit that's working so I guess control is the main thing and the quality of that lead is coming to you directly as opposed to being shared with with many others too or, or would it make sense to do both or yeah, yeah depending on your marketing budget and it's all about outcomes you've got to look at the data and, and make sensible decisions with the data that you've got good good any other questions before we finish no, I think you've bamboozled them all. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Laura and Moxham. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next session is in 15 minutes, and it's uh, a session all about the, the housing market in this country. So please be here, 15 minutes.